This is what 9.30 at night looks like at Tassie at the moment. <laughs> We're at 40 degrees. I once like swore <laughs> that I wasn't going to go south of 18 degrees. But I'm actually pretty happy I've come down here. Welcome to Free Range Sailing. Join us as we sail around Australia, visiting its wild places in our 30-foot, 50-year-old sailing boat, Marool. Living off the land and sea while sailing a yacht that costs less than a new car, we show that it's possible to have big adventures with a seaworthy boat on a very modest budget. Well, as beautiful as it is, it, um, the conditions can change really quickly. So we can't leave the dinghy you know, in the water. We always have to have the boat ready to, ready to go. We're not big enough to have davits, so our only option really is to pack up the boat every evening. And we're gonna have to just get into that discipline while we're here in Tassie. The following morning we sailed out of Lady Barron to explore some of the islands on the western side of Flinders Island. The strong northerly wind brought with it a lot of smoke from the ongoing bushfires happening on the mainland of Australia. When anchoring on foul ground, our fender does double duty as a float for our trip line. A trip line is a length of rope attached to the crown of the anchor that enables us to pull a stuck anchor out backwards. This is a green lip abalone to the right and a black lip to the left. We were very pleased to see both species in abundance here.
So that was quite a successful abalone mission. That's the first time we found green lip abalone and as is the free range style, we've chopped some up and we're frying it on the fry pan to see what it tastes like. Not tough. Not tough. <laughs> Little green fringes would probably turn some people off. I like it. Yeah. So what did you cook them with, Troy? Butter. Butter. And salt. And salt. So we still haven't had a tough abalone yet. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just, I you think know, we just cook that one for 40 seconds. Yep. And kill them as soon as you bring them on board. Mm. It's a bit of a strange thing. We, we've caught some rainwater today and we've had a lot of fires. Um, I don't know whether you've been keeping track of the news, but on the east coast of Australia, there's been a lot of pretty, you know, like extensive fires. The water that we've harvested tastes lightly smoked. So, I don't know. We can't really, can't really start again. I mean, we're restricted in what water we can use, but I don't think I'm going to end up with mouth cancer or anything like that. But it's, it's weird. It's a, it's a, just a really, really, it's sort of like the undertaste as if I was drinking a scotch. It just doesn't burn like scotch. It just tastes like water, but yeah, just a little bit smoky. Yeah, it's smoky. It's weird. There's just lots of, lots of effects you just wouldn't expect from something like that. What is it, Pascal? What are we? We are feasting on green lip abalone. Um, flathead belly, crispy flathead belly, flathead pate, uh, pickled red onion, currants, walnuts, um, like, and they're in like an anchovy oil. How do you, how do you make the pickled onions? I just soak them in vinegar and a bit of salt. Oh, too easy. And they make this really, they're red onions, so they make this really pink, beautiful pink colour. If you've been with us for about um, two years, thanks, congratulations, it's two years of free range sailing, but you would have been, um, you would have seen that up in the Torres Straits, we were stuck in about 50 knots for a little while, a um, bit of gale, a bit of gale conditions and it blew up our wind generator. So I pulled it apart and um, you know, like the circuit board was completely fried. So what I did then was I put this bridge rectifier, a thousand volt bridge rectifier straight onto the windings and ran it out from there. and. That just gave me an unregulated voltage source and for the last two years it's just been going absolutely perfectly. But um, again we just had like some pretty major winds as soon as we got here into Tasmania and I saw that it was like making power stop and finally died. So I looked inside and the brushes are completely molten, <laughs> they're gone. Um, the yaw bearing, it's it's really seized up in there. Um, that had nothing to do with voltage or amps or anything like that. It's just getting really old. Because this unit here, actually that's, it might not be the yaw bearings, it might be just melted brushes in there. But the, this unit was actually put on the boat in 2004. So it's been living out in heavy, harsh conditions for 16 years. And 2020 was just its year to go. So, um, as much as I like to, as much as I really like to um, repair things and keep things going and not buy new, um, you know that's that's our our sort of conservation effort, if you like. Um, as much as we like to do that, it sometimes you just got to bite the bullet and just accept that some things die, especially out in a marine environment. And Sixteen years is a pretty good record. So as far as um, as far as these Air X marine wind generators go, yes, this one's been a bit noisy, but. 16 years of supplying, I don't know how many kilowatt hours of power over those years, been pretty good. So we're just uh, running on solar power at the moment, which is, um, you know, it's a bit tough for us because we've got to make those videos and everything else like that. Tassie's intermittent cloud, but you know, we had, um, we maintained 14 volts at the moment, so we'll see how we go. But by the time we get back to a major city, I think it's time to go shopping for a new wind generator. 
potentially I could keep all this as a spare part. So this is the rotor assembly, okay, the rotor and stator, and I've still got um, a perfectly functional bridge rectifier here, so I can put all that away. So if we ever get burned windings, if I just go for another Air X, I know that there's people out there and they'll be like, you should be buying a D400. I know, they're a really good unit. I think they're about $3,200, whereas the Air Xs, I still think we can pick them up for under two grand. And if we do that, I know that the pole is exactly the right size and I'll have um, I'll have these spare spare windings and a spare stator and a spare rotor. So I think we might go with that. We might go with the, um, the Air X again because we went and bought those fancy blue blades. And so that will make it a silent wind. Oh well. That's what happens when you're cruising around on boats, just fixing stuff in exotic locations. Greenleaf abalone sliced in half lengthways with a hair in it. And we're going to crumb them in panko. See how they turn out. We've never done this before. It's not too tough. Look, it's nice and floppy. Okay, flour first. Black coating of flour. Then egg. Last egg that I found. I don't even know. It was loose out of the box. And then panko. What's panko? Panko is Japanese breadcrumbs. It's like rice flour. It goes really crispy. In an abalone heaven. There we go, panko crumbed abalone, it's happening. Um, it looks amazing, it smells amazing. So, just waiting for Pascal to wrap it up. <laughs> we're gonna scoff all of that. Oh, I'm gonna get really full and then I'm gonna... And then we're gonna go for a swim and we'll see if there's any crayfish here. Mm. Cause that's the only thing that you haven't... I've seen some crayfish earlier, but they were too small. So this looks a little bit crayfishy. So we'll see if some of that's there and then we'll be really happy. Last one. Tender. Crispy mm. <laughs> on the outside, soft in the middle. Mm. Oh. Yummy. Not tough at all. Mm -mm. This was the wrong ground for crayfish but there was still plenty of abalone, as well as many colourful leather jackets and wraths.
Good hunter. Thanks for tuning in this week. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel as it really helps our videos get recommended to a wider audience.